Hey everybody, it's Liam here. Uh, first of all, apologies, I'm a little bit under the weather. But uh, as I was uh, putting together the edit for this episode, I realized that we did not talk about the official announcement of CM Punk coming back to AEW for Collision. So this is me mentioning that for posterity's sake, and more importantly, so that I can put his name in the title of the episode and not have it be false advertising. Because Phil gets me them sweet, sweet clicks, and that's ultimately what I'm uh, truly after. So, thanks everybody, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Bye! The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 339. It's the first week of June of 2023. I'm Ethan. Welcome, Crab fans. I'm Liam. We have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. AEW had a pay-per-view this past weekend. Mm -hmm. NXT had a pay-per-view this past weekend. WWE had a pay-per-view this past weekend. Jay had a show. Conan has a show. (laughs) Jimmy Kimmel has a show. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so much to discuss. Uh, let's begin with something that's not going to make me angry. (laughs) WWE Night of Champions. This was a Saturday afternoon show. Mm -hmm. This was... We had some storyline advancement in the bloodline story, which Mm -hmm. never happens. (laughs) And we have a new world heavyweight champion crowned. So uh, Seth Rollins beat AJ Styles. Best AJ match in a long time, I thought. What did you think? Yeah, I thought it was it was good. I didn't think it was, you know, wasn't outstanding. I don't think it's a match that's going to get a lot of. uh... A lot of end of the year match of the year votes, but it was yeah, it was good. There's a there's a place, and I've I've brought this up before. There should be an award for a match that wasn't great and it wasn't terrible. It was just a nice match that you had a nice time watching, and I think this falls under that category. All right, good enough. Um, Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch. I have thoughts about this. <laughs> Shocking. The uh. The first match of the secret plan. Uh, they <laughs> they worked at a pace that Dragon Lee and Hiromu Takahashi thinks was too fast. Mm-hmm. They worked so fast. Do you think? It, do you think it was a case of like they were told they had sixteen minutes, and then when they're about to go through the curtain, you got nine? Like they went they went almost fifteen. Okay. Um. So I I don't think it was, and they went on second. So I don't think they uh, they had their time cut or anything like that. I think they just wanted to go really fast. <laughs> I thought it was a little sloppy, but uh, it was really good. Trish Stratus is really good at forty seven years old. Becky Lynch was never the smoothest worker to begin with. Mm. and is not the same wrestler she was five years ago. Mm. Uh, But uh, I thought this was really good. What did you think? Yeah, I thought for it was, I thought exactly what it should have been for the first match of uh, what's going to be a longer program. I thought it was, it was a solid foundation. I was not wowed by anything in the match beyond, hey, you know, Trish didn't look out of place in there, despite being, as you said, 47 years old and not having had a, a long singles match in four years. Um, so, yeah, it was good. And then they, they put Zoe Starks with Trish at the finish. Zoe Starks immediately broke Becky Lynch's nose. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's it's just Stark. It's not Starks. Oh, it's just Stark. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. Um, yeah. Zoe, yeah, so Zoe Stark uh, immediately broke Becky's nose, and uh, now we're off to the races. Now, now Trish has a has a has a protege, and that means Trish don't have to, you know, work so much. If she's going to be around, say till SummerSlam, she can uh, 
she can be in the corner or work work tags as opposed to having to do a bunch of singles matches. Yeah, yeah, there's that. Um Gunther beat Mustafa Ali. They had a they I thought they had a nice match. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't, uh, you know, I think it's on the low end of like gu- recent Guther pay per view matches, but that's hardly a, uh, hardly an insult to either man. They, uh, yeah, they had a solid, a solid good time. Asuka beat Bianca Belair to win the Raw Women's title. Um, Bianca had job face and mm-hmm. in fact did the job. Uh, I enjoyed the match though. They did the finish where Asuka spit and missed in her hand. And then rubbed her hand in Bianca's eyes to blind her. And uh, that led to Bianca losing the Raw Women's Championship. Two fellow SmackDown superstar, Asuka. <laughs> Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah, yeah, they, went I, fi- they, they went 15 minutes. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was solid. I Interesting that they chose to do this now <laughs> as opposed to at WrestleMania. Um, but we've talked about it for a while. It felt like uh, Bianca had been kind of stuck in the same gear for a while now, so she's been cheated out of her belt. Theoretically, she should be righteously furious about that, and this could give her a chance to maybe tap into a new dynamic for herself as a television performer. But we'll see. But Asuka's great, so never going to complain about making her the champion or the focal point of your women's division. Rhea Ripley beat Natalia in 70 seconds. On oh, Natalia's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you watched the show before I did. You sent me a message. You're like, uh, they destroyed Natty in a foreign country. They made her fly like 18 hours to uh, to Saudi Arabia to get beaten on her birthday. Mm-hmm. And in 70 seconds. And uh, it's like, did they also kill her cat? <laughs> like, I'm trying to think of a ways that they could have made this worse or more personal for Natty. It was it, this felt this felt just cruel. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. She's like, she's such a like. I know she kind of uses it for like her own Twitter and Instagram branding, but sure. she's she's been around forever. Like, she's like, and seems really well liked despite coming off as a weird robot person in every interview I've ever seen, she seems like everybody that knows her loves her and, you know, genuinely likes her and, and, and TJ. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this is about. I mean, maybe the old man, you know, the old man maybe just hadn't, hadn't effed with the Hart family in a while. Just wanted to, just wanted to get back to one of his old favorites. I don't know. He does love to do that. I mean, Paul hates the hearts too, so it could also be Paul. I don't want to give Vince all the credit. Sure. They did the uh, Brock Lesnar, Cody Rhodes match where uh, Cody passed out in a Kimura. They, uh... <laughs> oh, man. The, sec- the second match of a three match program, I assume. So mm-hmm. I th- think we run this back at SummerSlam one more time. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I thought the finish was kind of silly, but that's what that's what you do. <laughs> I feel like do they and I know I don't I'm not expecting buckets of blood, even though Brock bled a lot in their first match. Um, but do they remember? Do you think the people putting these matches together remember like the reason that Steve Austin passed out in the sharpshooter was not because his legs hurt really bad? Um, no, they have no idea why that happened. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was, I think it was more to do with like the blood pouring out of his face and, and all that. But hey, they, they tried something. Um, and I mean, the match itself was, was certainly, was certainly fine. But yeah, I just, I just thought that finish was silly. So whatever, baby uh, faces don't tap. They went nine minutes and 40 seconds, and I think of those nine minutes and 40 seconds, Cody was in a Kimura for eight minutes and 59 seconds of the match. <laughs> so, he was in it for a very long time. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so there's that. Then the main event, Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn retained the undisputed tag team titles, defeating Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa when 
Jimmy Uso. I think I can finally tell the Usos apart. I swear I figured it out like five years ago, but (laughs) yeah, I'm finally there with you. Uh, This this angle uh, solidified it for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jimmy Uso turned on Roman Reigns. And uh, we'll find out where this goes on this week's SmackDown as Roman Reigns celebrates 1,000 days as Universal Champion. But uh, they uh, then here's the next twist, and it's the at least Jimmy Uso uh, splitting from the bloodline. What did you think of the angle? What did you think of the match? Uh, the match was good. Um, Sammy got a, uh, a hero's welcome. Uh, that that was pretty. That was nice. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty fascinating. Obviously, it's not a secret. He's, you know, he's of Syrian descent. That country and Saudi Arabia have been at odds for a long time, and so he got to have a moment, you know, as an Ara- you know, of an Arabic speaking good guy in an Arabic speaking country, and got to introduce himself and 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 just just got a giant ovation. It was very very cool, um, and. Yeah, I thought the the match itself was good, pretty much standard Roman Reigns main event fair. And then yeah, the big the big twist there that I guess that because it's all all of the focus since at least since the Royal Rumble really has been on Jay. And so now the fact that Jimmy is the first one to uh to fire the first shot, I think is hey, I didn't necessarily see that coming. And that's a uh, that's a fun little twist on this, which, as we've talked about, I've been kind of feeling this bloodline stuff's a little long in the tooth. Uh, so uh, a, a twist, you know, uh, we all know kind of where it's going, but they they threw us a little curveball on the way. Um, so I, I appreciated that. I thought it was it was a good angle. And it yeah, it does make you curious what they're going to do. And it gives you a little bit more interest beyond just whatever they're going to do on uh, on Friday with Roman. So now Jimmy has a show. <laughs> Jay, Jay has a show. Just me all, and two guys named Jimmy. All the Usos have shows now. All right. We can move along to uh, nothing really happened on WWE TV this week. <laughs> Zoe Stark uh, did hit Becky with her finish again on Raw. So they haven't taken that finish away from her yet. So there's that. Uh, Becky Lynch and I both big Kill Bill guys. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, that's wonderful. Do you like Trish's uh, uh, Saudi jumpsuit? That was that's an homage to her. One of her old outfits, right? Of co- course I did. Okay. <laughs> of co- course I did. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> double or nothing, 2023. <sighs> I um, I I don't care for AEW matches uh, mm. quite often. I don't I don't care for their uh, television program. Mm. Um, I usually enjoy their matches, but uh, all of their television programs just the pits, <laughs> mm. just. Just not good. Um, I would like to talk about uh, double or nothing pay per view that happened uh, this past weekend. So uh, Matt Hardy now owns Ethan Page's contract. <laughs> that was a big angle for the uh, for the pre show match. Mm-hmm. Matt Hardy now owns Ethan Page's contract. This is Tony Khan's favorite storyline to do. Mm-hmm. Who owns Matt Hardy's contract? Whose contract does Matt Hardy own? Who cares? Yeah, At least it was on the pre-show. Yeah, something for something for Matt Hardy to do on his YouTube channel or whatever. Oh. There was a battle royal that opened the show. 21 guy blackjack battle royal. A lot of people seem to like this. I hated it. I thought it was a bad, 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 bad wrestling match. What did you think of it? Um I think that AEW's battle royals are never very good um, because there's too much stuff happening and they don't have a camera crew that is capable of capturing all of the action that is happening. Um, so, which I put more on the uh, shoulders of whoever is laying out that match, those matches. 
Um, because you, you know who's the producer for this one? Was it Antonio Khan? Did it was. That? Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I mean, when it got down to a few guys at the end, I thought it was really enjoyable. I liked, I really liked the end with Orange and Swerve. Yeah, you know, Big Bill got a lot of shine in it. Mm. Um, um, yeah, yes. I thought, I thought the last. The last, the last, you know, five or six, when it comes down to five or six guys, I thought it was pretty good. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really, really get into it until it came down to Orange and Swerve. And then at that point, I kind of just wish they had done a long Orange and Swerve singles match instead of all the other guff. But that's well, a lot of times that's just battle royals in general. You will get your wish next week's AEW Dynamite. Orange Cassidy Swerve Strickland for the International Championship. I'm genuinely very very much looking forward to that. Unironically, I think it'll be. I mean, I'm sure there'll be like way too much Brian Cage and sure Prince Nana for my liking, but sure. I think I really <laughs> think the world of Swerve as a performer and I Prince and I, Nana and Prince Nana. Is that not how you say it? <laughs> yeah. That's how I'm going to say it, regardless. <laughs> just to be clear. Thank I feel you. like Shivani says Prince Nana, and that I picked this up from somebody. Sure, um, but uh, but and I think Orange is by sheer quantity of good television matches is like my front runner for Wrestler of the Year so far this year. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But as a pay per view match, she kind of maybe want more than a cluster F for 10, 15 minutes, and then a good last five minutes off the show uh, at least uh i like orange i think orange has the best match on tv every week Pretty so. much. <laughs> uh so there's that yeah adam cole beat chris jericho in an unsanctioned Oof. match by referee stoppage they got 17 minutes sabu was the special guest enforcer <laughs> sabu sabu's role in this match was to uh, enter, climb the top rope, jump off the top rope through a table and like take out all the seconds. Um, fine, fine use of Sabu. Mm-hmm. But he was not actually the guest enforcer. He just did a cameo uh, splash. So uh, I don't know about that. And then Adam Cole just beat Chris Jericho and he beat him and he beat him. And he beat him, and he beat him, and he beat him, and he beat him some more. They did a cool spot where uh, Cole went for the Panama Sunrise. This might have been on TV, actually. I don't even remember if it was at the pay-per-view or on TV. But Cole went for a Panama Sunrise, and Jericho turned into the wall. So I thought that was fun. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, this was a baby face beating the hell out of a heel for 17 minutes. Not a fan. What did you think? Espe- yeah, I agree. I was not a fan. I especially think it's bad. And look, we'll get to the main event in a second here. I understand why they didn't want to do like barbed wire and thumbtacks and buckets of blood because they're going to the main event was main- do all that. Yeah. Right. And that's that's a rare amount of restraint because I feel like we see the same types of angles and spots on a lot of AEW shows. So um, good, good, good in theory to not repeat do stuff here that you're going to repeat in the main event especially when the main event is billed as this out of control wild brawl but if you're if you're doing an unsanctioned match and this is adam cole getting revenge for chris jericho carrying out a hit on his girlfriend uh i think i needed more something more vicious and probably something quicker than this because it just yeah. kind of goes on and on and, you know, they go back and forth a little bit and they use some weapons and, you know, there's a fire extinguisher and a chain and some chairs and Sabu going through a table and, and whatever, but it just, it just didn't feel like it had the right intensity. And it's like, I've seen Adam Cole. I know people kind of put this on, well, Adam Cole is the baby face and he didn't show the requisite fire the baby face needs to pull this off that might be the case um but i would just say i've seen adam cole have really good like weapons matches in nxt um i've seen him have good hardcore matches in ring of honor so i don't necessarily i wouldn't necessarily put this one squarely at adam cole's feet so much as i would i just thought the way the match was laid out 
and what they didn't do uh, hurt it. And probably it also just went too long at the end of the day. Um, like a lot of Jericho's pay-per-view matches. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't put the square. The, I mean, the funny part was they had like, they did the mixed tag on the following Wednesday on dynamite this week. And I thought everything was a lot more crisp. The crowd was a lot hotter for it. And every, and by, by default, every time Cole and maybe it's also helped because they were contrasted by Soraya and Brit doing spots together. But like, I thought, I was like, Oh, this is pretty good. Like what Jericho and Cole did on Wednesday, but on the pay-per-view just didn't, didn't feel like a big grudge match bloody battle it wasn't bloody they nobody bled and then jericho being the self-referential fellow that he is uh aped his own finish from his unsanctioned match with Shawn michaels um only it wasn't uh it wasn't good um and also <laughs> it came after a not very good match as opposed to the sean and jericho match which ruled so you know that kind of i think that weird of a finish following a not very exciting match led to a very flat reaction from the crowd. I think that's fair. Uh, FTR wrestled Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal with Karen Jarrett, Sanjay mm-hmm. Dutt, and Satnam Singh. Mark Briscoe was the special guest referee, and they went 20 minutes. For FTR to beat uh, Jarrett Lethal, there were uh, Karen gave Aubrey a guitar shot. That was funny. It was. Did you notice Aubrey was off TV this week to sell the uh, to sell that. Uh, I had. I didn't notice. I didn't notice she wasn't there. But that's that's kind of awesome, actually. She was not the referee for Jericho's match. She always referees Jericho's mm. match. Good call. So yeah. So there's that. Uh, FTR keep the uh, tag team titles. I'm not sure why we went to all this trouble. <laughs> I'm not sure why we went, why we went to all this trouble. This is that. I mean, this is the pattern of Jeff Jarrett in AEW. Is they do all of the TNA Gaga BS, but unlike in TNA, he loses at the end, <laughs> which is fine. Except that Jeff Jarrett is way more likable than FTR, and I wanted him to win. So, sure. kind, of, kind of let the wind out of my sails when FTR retained. Sure. Wardlow beat Christian Cage in a ladder match. Um, this felt... Wardlow is a madman. <laughs> uh, he was jumping off everything, and he broke a ladder and then tried to climb the broken ladder, and then the referee tried to hold the broken ladder for him anyway, and he fell over anyway. This was a, a disaster. Uh, but Wardlow's crazy. Yeah. And uh, Christian, he did a swanton off the tallest ladder you've ever seen on put Christian through two tables in the aisle way, the old Jeff Hardy spot. Um, the Luchasaurus through the table, I think. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, this sets up Wardlow versus the Luchasaurus for the mm-hmm. TNT champ- Championship. So this feud begins with a ladder match. And uh, now we're on to the second part of the feud, I suppose. This was a spectacle. What did you think? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, uh, it's not a match I'm going to remember other than, I don't know, Arn, Arn Anderson, like, Ugh. fighting the blood caps. I think it was a blood capsule, but he bit, they do a spot where the Luchasaurus is threatening, like he's going to give Arn a choke slam, and then Arn bites his thumb, and then there's just dark crimson all over. <laughs> He looked like Buster in Rest of Development after he drank a lot of juice. Yeah, uh, he was uh, he was out of control. But uh, yeah, Arn's Arn's getting physical a lot lately. I don't know. I guess he's just feeling he's feeling froggy right now. But uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, so it, like I, the Swanton off the ladder was memorable. So Ward Hill War, uh, Wardlow has a has quite the <laughs> uphill battle for making people care about him again given the past uh, 365 days uh, that he has had. So uh, good luck to him. Ward Hill has an up low battle. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Tony Storm beat Jamie Hayter. They went three minutes. Didn't seem like Jamie could do very much. Not sure why they had this match. Made Jamie look bad. Wasn't a good match. 
Tony looked bad, except for hitting Storm Zero. Um, Soraya and Ruby Soho were interfering. This is the second match that Britt Baker did a run in on. So Britt Baker was in two matches on the pay per view despite having zero matches on the pay per view. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think I've covered everything. What did you think of uh, what did you think of this? Yeah, I mean, it sucks. Looks like Jamie's really hurt. And but you know, Tony kind of had this weird, awkward placeholder run before when Rosa got hurt and then Jamie got really over. And so you know, Tony as a heel with the with the title could theoretically mean something. I think kind of like Jamie, it's going to be an uphill battle for her because she is the second in her her own stable, despite being the champion. Um, So uh, I don't know. She might be fighting for TV time a little bit, but hey, they had her they had her on Dynamite to plug. She's going to she's going to be defending the belt at some house shows this weekend. So, you know. <laughs> Her role on these house shows is just to uh, is to is to work with people that that aren't good yet, and uh, and they're trying to make them good. So I can think of worse things than you know going ten twelve minutes with Tony Storm on a house show. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. I mean, what whatever the girls can't learn from head coach Madison Rain, of course. Naturally, naturally, it's, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely, it's absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. Ah, uh, there's a six man tag uh, for the trio's title. House of Black beat the acclaimed and Daddy S. Uh, crowd was really into this. They love to scissor. They love uh, Father S. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of, kind of makes you wonder if it was the right call to take the tag belts off them <laughs> back in December to put them on the gun so that FDR could win them. But I, uh, I well, know. what do I know? What do I know? I, don't know? I guess they're over even though they get beaten all the time. So you sure. can just keep beating them. Yeah, that's 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 good booking. Uh Jay Cargill beat Ty Valkyrie. Ty Valkyrie uh got cucked <laughs> on her way out and uh and she's uh I think she's gonna turn heel now and feud with the new champion who's Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander ended Jay Cargill's undefeated streak. Uh crowd went nuts for this, crowd went nuts for Chris. Chris came off really well here. She came off really well in the press conference. She was the only person that came off really well in the press conference after the show. Uh Chris Statlander is the new TBS champion, what'd you think? Yeah, it was. Uh, I thought the actual match that Jade, I couldn't believe how into the match uh, that Jade and Taya had first, the people were. Like, I yeah. thought people would just be dead, dead, dead for that, and they were not. And then they had a, I thought, a pretty solid match. They did their finish, and then, yeah, they do the call out. And it wasn't exactly clear to me at first if they were calling out another, if they were doing the honky tonk man thing. And right. actually saying they were going to have the match tonight, or if they were just setting up another, you know, another next challenger for her. Right. So, you know, and then, yeah, by the time people realize, oh, it's a return. Oh, she's going to win the title here. Yeah, it was exciting. And it's like at the end of the day, did Jade, did going 60, you know, help Jade? I don't know. It gave you a reason to keep her on TV, despite the fact that you didn't want to put her with any of the top women in the company. So, uh, you know, and it established her as a star. And now theoretically it makes Statlander a bigger star for being the one to beat her. And she can be a complete opposite type of television character to Jade in that she can defend the championship frequently. And which is theoretically, I think the point of having a secondary belt is if your world champion's not wrestling on TV all the time, that your secondary champ is. So yeah, it's it was it was a good segment, and it feels like a good fresh start for Statlander, who hopefully can be a little less snake bitten with injuries uh, in in the foreseeable future. MJF retained the AEW World Title in a four way. They did not hint at who his next opponent may be, and he was only on Dynamite in a pre tape video package. Uh, on Wednesday, so they did some of the things that we thought that we'd do. They did not do some of the things that we thought they should do in terms of making it clear that Phil's coming for him. Uh, what did you think of the four-way? I mean, yeah, it was it was an all-action 
you know, PWG style match. It was good. I, I had fun with it. Everybody got a little bit of a chance to shine. Again, I still don't think anybody thought anybody but MJF was going to win at the end of the day. But they did get some good near falls at the end when, you know, they're they're kind of teasing doing the the old house show finish where, you know, one guy hits a move and then gets thrown in another ring and the other guy hits the cover. So they did some creative stuff there towards the end. But yeah, it was a good match. Um, I think we can could put this chapter behind us of of giving Jack Perry and Darby Allen microphones every week. And uh, and Sam Guevara is going to have a baby with uh, with Ty Conti. So good 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 luck to them. They definitely think they're baby faces now. <laughs> mm-hmm. They've done it. They've weathered the storm. It's fascinating. Uh. All right. Uh, main event was anarchy in the arena. Um. The BCC defeated the elite when uh, Takeshi had turned. I liked that part of it. Mm-hmm. I could I could have done without the twenty six and a half minutes that came before that. <laughs> what did you think of, the, of this match? Yeah, it was it was a lot. Um, it, yeah, I don't know. I didn't I didn't dislike it. Like I think we talked about this last week. I thought it was kind of fun as I was watching it live, but it isn't something I could ever see myself going back to watch some of the wacky creative stuff, like the barbed wire on the poker chip on the set and Matt Jackson and, and uh, Claudio fighting, fighting out and just are just in an old truck for some reason, they just fought out yes. to the parking lot and throw each other around in a big truck. Um, and then the, uh, the uh, exploding super kick for some reason, <laughs> that uh, Claudio then punted into the crowd. I thought was hilarious. Uh, I mean, look, they were, they all worked really hard. Everybody bled except maybe Danielson. And uh, yeah, then you got your big twist at the end. I, I thought it was, it was as advertised. It was chaotic. It was wild. Um, seems like maybe you break off Kenny to feud with Takeshita and then you have the hangman and the bucks continue on with the BCC for a while longer, but, or maybe, maybe Takeshita does end up joining with the, with the BCC guys and you do blood and guts and they go get Kota Ibushi is the elite's fifth guy. Um, they did. That's a, that was their subtle hint on dynamite this week is that Kenny left the country, but he's not, he wasn't going back to Canada. He's somewhere else in the world. So, I mean, uh, but of course, then Moxley's also been feuding with Okada uh, and and Shota. So and Shota and, and Okada have been feuding. So maybe they're going to get Okada to be their their fifth man instead of a uh, instead of Ibushi if he's not available. I think they have a lot of choices. Don Callis made a point of saying on Dynamite that Takeshita was better than Okada. Mm, yes, good point. So uh, yeah, there's that. Oh, ready then. We have uh, New Japan. They were they had best of the Super Juniors this past weekend. Master Wato won it. <laughs> they desperately needed to make new Super Junior heavyweight uh, stars. Mm-hmm. Master Wato, okay, all right, all right, sure, why not? Except now he's got to. Uh, he had main event bunch of shows. And now he's wrestling for the title on the second biggest show of the year, Dominion. <laughs> so this is a setup, uh, setup weekend for Dominion. Uh, Dominion happens this Sunday at three in the morning, <laughs> and uh, that'll be the uh, they'll announce the G one participants at that show, and then they're kind of going to have a tradition. What th- would used to be a traditional, almost a month and a half off. I mean, they'll be running some New Japan Road shows, but mm-hmm. other than that, they got a month and a half before G1. This is where Okada and and gets to go fishing for a month. Mm-hmm. This cool. was always a big part of the summer schedule before <laughs> the pandemic. Is uh, Okada would get to go fishing for a month, mm-hmm. and uh, I hope he I hope he gets to do some fishing. He's gonna have to take a week off to do Forbidden Door in Toronto. That one would assume, but yeah. But that's a week. Yep. He still gets he still gets the other three off. Yep. He's, he needs to go fishing for a <laughs> while. 
isn't that Bischoff's thing? Didn't he go fishing? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he went fly fishing in Wyoming. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Uh, the Rock. And you want to talk about Dwayne having to return to the Fast and the Furious <laughs> franchise? Um, Came crawling back. It's the best thing it's the best thing for his career at this point. Yeah, people like him in those movies. <laughs> I don't think people wanted to see him uh be a superhero and fight Superman, but uh you know people like him as uh, as the goateedman and uh he's either Hobbs and or Shaw who could who could know which one. It's Hobbs. Uh, Okay, sure. In uh, in those <laughs> movies, and uh, yeah, I, I guess the big deal is this is this is the big blow off, or is it, of right. the Vin, of the Vin Diesel, uh, Dwayne feud, which has been has been rocking Hollywood for years now. Dwayne Dwayne said they bury the hatchet last summer, and they're mm-hmm. always going to do what's best for the fans. He's always done what's best for the fans. That's True. how he's he's built his his movie career is mm-hmm. fans first. Always have to serve the fans first, and he and Vin are going to lead this franchise with brotherhood. Mm, yes, I just like how he like immediately puts himself on the Vin as if that franchise is anybody else's but Vin Diesel's. <laughs> like he's like, no, we're doing this. It's like we are leading this franchise right, with for the fans. America's best friend, Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> but. He's not necessarily coming back for the mainline movies. He's getting yet another spin-off movie that will uh I guess connect to have some connective tissue between uh an in-between quill, I believe they uh the the uh inarticulate way of referring to those is. But just very happy to see Dwayne make a decision, not for the critics, but for the fans once again. And I, I toast my Terramana tequila to uh to Dwayne. As uh, as he uh, as he d- make makes this next Fast and the Furious movie for the fans. So, uh, I I think they were saying that there's I think I read somewhere there's like two Fast movies left mm-hmm. after this one that just came out. There was only supposed to be one, and then suddenly there's two more. <laughs> right, because this one is uh this one that that it's, that was just in theaters or is currently in theaters is Fast X. Mm-hmm. And then the next movie is going to be a, a rock solo venture, the Hobbs movie. Mm-hmm. And then the movie after that is going to be Fast X Part Two. That seems like cheating to me. Mm-hmm. But uh, we mentioned Kill Bill earlier. Kill Bill had a Part One and a Part Two, Volume One, Volume Two. Sure, Harry Potter. So, Lots of all the great of, films. A lot of volumes. Yes. Uh, ugh. Don't get me started on adults who love Harry Potter. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I think they're just going to make them in, in perpetuity, and why would they not? Why would you ever say this franchise is ending? I I don't know because these movies I don't know I don't know how this current one is tracking, but they always make really good money in China too. Like, which is why it was such an important detail that Cena on his first one had to like apologize for accidentally calling Taiwan a country. Right. Yeah. Um, Didn't they they kill I think they, did they kill John off in this one? I think there's a cliffhanger maybe. I, I think he's like he gets injured or something. Okay. I haven't seen any of the fast movies since um uh Tokyo Drift, I believe the second one. Mm-hmm. I, I think that was three. Was... There was there was Fast and Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious, Tokyo okay. Drift. Okay, Tokyo Drift's the last one I saw. Then. Okay, it's which, it's been a couple is, decades. Which is actually now like the eighth one in the timeline. Oh lord! Because they wanted to keep using the actor from the original movies that they killed off in in Tokyo Drift. Oh lord! So they kept like putting off when that happened, and then they ended up bringing him back after they inserted his death in to one of the later movies. He's he's just back now, so it didn't even matter. <laughs> Ugh. Well, at least Vin and and Dwayne are going to lead that franchise with brotherhood. That's right. I think for that's, the fans. That, <laughs> yes. Everything yeah. that, everything Dwayne does is for the fans. It's just important. I just want you to know that. I want I want the listener to know that he's doing it for you. I'd like to read some of the uh, the uh, the some of Dwayne's. Social media post announcing his return. 
Please and do. I let's get your reaction. Mm-hmm. This is Dwayne Johnson uh, put this out on his social media channels. Quote, hope you've got your Thunderwear on. Mm-hmm. Hobbs is back. And he just got L-E-I apostrophe D laid. Because Dwayne is wearing a lay in Hawaii. I see. As he's filming this. Uh, and then let's go on and uh, skip the part. Okay. Last summer, Vin and I put all the past behind us. We'll lead with brotherhood and resolve and always take care of the franchise, characters, and all caps, fans (laughs) that we love. (laughs) I've built my career on an, quote, audience first. Both, (laughs) Both words capitalized, unquote, mentality. And that will always serve as my capital N North, capital S star. (laughs) And then he ends it with, quote, daddy's got to go to work, unquote. Hobbs, all caps. Your thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) I hate him. I hate him. Oh, He's the worst. He's just a weird little robot man. Uh I yeah, that's that's perfect. That is to me every encapsulation. Is he holding aloft perhaps a, a glass of terramana tequila in that photo? On I haven't the watched the video. It's a video. Oh, okay. It's a video. I haven't watched the video yet. I'd I like to think the, so. I, I'm uh, I did see him stumping on social media this past week though, talking about how um, he's already sold like 10 times the amount of tequila that George Clooney did bef- well, p- before Clooney's uh, tequila brand uh, sold for a billion dollars or whatever it was. Wow. It's like Dwayne's like, well, we haven't sold our brand yet, but uh, we have sold 10 times as much tequila as George did before George got a billion dollars uh you know, twelve years ago or whatever. So. Is that the game of why, like, he and Ryan Reynolds get into this thing? Is it use your name to elevate it and then just sell it off? I I don't know. I mean, that would make sense. Sure. Yeah. Um. But also, who has more money than The Rock? <laughs> uh, George Clooney. Short, apparently, <laughs> it's a short list. George Clooney, his good friend Jeff Bezos, Ugh. his good his good friend Mark Zuckerberg. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God, what do you think those guys talk about? <laughs> Dwayne and and Jeff Bezos was the moment when when they had when they went public with their bromance. That was the moment I think I turned on Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like, what could you possibly have in common with this with this human being? And it's like, no, you're just both androids who want to sell me product. Pretty much. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. what you have in common. Yeah, so I'm not into that. All right. Uh, anything else you want to get into? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. How was the NXT show? I uh, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then I'm, be- I- <laughs> I'm behind on the NXT show. Um... I haven't watched this week's NXT TV yet either. Well, the uh, only thing, as far as I'm concerned, a man who only watches NXT through GIFs, uh, is that the only thing worth seeing on NXT the last week is uh, Blair Davenport, uh, the former B Priestley's return to NXT, where Booker T clearly did not know who she was. Yes. And and uh, Vic, Vic Joseph... Um, kept going to Booker for re- a reaction, and Booker uh, just said nothing. <laughs> That's in the biz. Yeah. All right. Till next time, everybody. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Well, we'll be, we will be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Mahalo. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features.
Your boy is tired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The fun thing that happens as as you get older uh, is that uh, you have allergies. I have allergies from uh, like the first week of March until November. Yeah. And like twice during that period, uh, the pollen gets so bad that I end up with like a sinus infection or a cold. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just not fun. But... You know, what are you going to do? I got jury duty tomorrow. Woo. Really excited. Downtown? Yep. Weren't you on a grand jury for like three months? <laughs> I was on call for federal jury duty for one entire month. I only had to actually go down to the courthouse one time, I think. But it was, yes you were on call for an entire month and you had to check like the night be- like it was like it was like monday to friday every week so you had to check on the sunday night before to see if they needed you for that week fascinating fascinating seems, seems inefficient i agree i mean at the time i was working for uh, staples which is uh, the worst place in america so uh, you know getting out of that on short notice was actually kind of a, a boon because I think at the end of, even on the day I finally did get called for it, I think they didn't end up using me for the jury. So I just just drove down to Baltimore for a few hours and hung out, and then <laughs> and then came home. So hmm. it was a plus in that I got out of working at Staples for like three days that week. I try to keep on keeping on.